A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part seven. Good news, the boiler passed all the tests and it now has a boiler certificate. Before it returns to my workshop, there are some things that I need to do first. These are the two brackets that hold the boiler in place between the frames. The main problem with these two brackets and the reason I removed them in the first place is that these two pieces of steel angle that were bolted to the frames used a pair of countersunk bolts which secured the boiler support bars to the pieces of angle with a 2BA nut on the end of each bolt and in both cases these nuts were in the way of the bolts coming through the frames. When the owner picked up the boiler I gave him these brackets because he said he could get them welded which meant that I could lose the bolts through the middle of the bar. When I was told that the boiler had passed all the tests and was due to come back, I asked him if he could send me back the brackets with the welded bars on. When I received these parts back, I was amazed. Look at the standard of the welded joint. I can only dream about things like this. I can work wonders with brazing rod or silver solder, but welding I find very difficult, especially the relentless feed of the wire on a MIG welder. I'm thinking about getting a TIG welder. The principle of a TIG welder makes more sense to me because I would be controlling the feed of the filler metal or whatever you call it. Now that the bars are securely welded to the pieces of angle, I can get rid of the retaining bolt. The way that these angle brackets mount to the frames was initially of concern to me, but I thought it through and realized that to shear off three 2BA bolts simultaneously would require a lot of force. In fact, there are three bolt holes in one of the brackets and four in the other. That's because two of the bolt holes are for the longer bolts that hold the hand pump in place. In this clip you can see some M6 cap head bolts in the shot. I thought about using these in place of the 2BA bolts, but then I looked at the job in detail. Enlarging the existing holes in the frames would be difficult because of other components outboard of the frames, for instance the screw reverser and on the other side the hand pump. With the camera pointing in between the frames you can see three of the bolt holes. I need to paint this area of the frames so I'm going to rub it down with some sandpaper. The original paintwork on this engine really is not so good. It's not too bad on the boiler cladding, the tanks and the cab, but on the frames it's pretty awful really. I do get the impression that the physical size and weight of this model was a bit too much for the builder. This is a woodworking chisel and I've used it before in some videos. The sharp pointy bit at the end I ground flat, but it still scrapes off the paint, as does both sides of the chisel and I can hold the normal pointy end without cutting myself. After a while I decided that it would be a much better idea to use my one inch belt sander to remove the paint. And here I am in the outer part of the workshop doing just that. Without wasting any more time, still in the outer part of the workshop, I placed the parts on the bench ready to paint. And the noise you can hear is me shaking the can of paint. It's a rattle can filled with etching primer and here I'm painting the parts using it. This etching primer really does go on well. Once it sprays, it spreads out very evenly. And because the paint contains an acid that eats into the metal, it really does stick well. I'm now going to turn my attention to the smoke box. Smoke boxes on miniature steam locomotives are always a problem because they get very hot and the paint often burns off. For this job, even though I don't like it, I'm going to use high temperature black paint. Why don't I like it? Well, it doesn't spray as well as the other stuff that I use. Here's a smoke box and chimney assembly on my bench. The first thing to do using cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, is to thoroughly degrease the part. And also the lacquer thinner will remove the top surface of the paint that's already on there. Some of the paint on this smoke box and chimney assembly is okay and some is diabolical. In this clip I'm using some fairly coarse emery cloth to remove any paint that's not fully stuck down. I've shortened the sequence because the rubbing down process took quite a long time. Eventually the worst of the paint was removed. Any paint that was left on the smoke box and chimney assembly, and thankfully that was most of it, was okay. Back into the outer part of the workshop, and here is the can of high temperature paint. I'm being very careful not to apply too much of this stuff because it runs when you look at it. 
The general plan is to coat the smoke box and the chimney in this high temperature paint, let it thoroughly harden, then rub it down using wet or dry sandpaper. Then I'm going to paint it with HMG satin black. I've done this quite a few times and I've found it to be successful. Even good old Humbrol enamel is okay. I've used that many times in the past on smoke boxes. But there is one concession that I do make when I use standard paint on smoke boxes. For the first couple of live steam runs I will keep the temperature in the smoke box low. And what this does is it stabilises and bakes on the paint. Then you can increase the temperature on subsequent runs and things normally seem to be okay. This clip shows me painting the brackets using this same paint. I don't need to but it was just very convenient. I had some black paint in my hand and there are the brackets. When I finally bolt these brackets in position in the frames I'm going to give them a coat of paint when they're in situ. I'll show the start of that process in the next episode when I paint the inside of the frames before fitting the brackets. I can't do anything else in this episode. I'm just going to leave you with this shot of the paint drying and say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.